Hello and welcome. My name is Creepish Candy, and this is my first ever doll repaint. I think the one that I got is called Rochelle Goyle. I'm not really sure on the doll names, honestly. I picked her because I wanted to make a very almost black skin, dark gray black skin doll, and I thought these little specks could be her little freckles and I really think I chose the right one. Here's my concept art. She's a drow. I started by cutting all of her hair off. It was quite greasy and old, so I really didn't feel too bad about it. And then I soaked her in really, really hot water, I think for about 10 minutes before popping off her head and starting to take all of the hair out of her head. I tried a couple of different methods for getting the hair out of her head. And I hated all of them. Um, I just found out about the screwdriver thing, so I'll try that the next time I have a doll custom. Next was probably my biggest mistake of this doll. I tried to remove the face with rubbing alcohol, assuming it was the same thing as acetone, and it did not work. I tried nail polish remover, but mine did not have any acetone in it. So I basically scraped the color off, and it took way too long and was ridiculously difficult. This is definitely something I have remedied. I've bought some acetone now, but I was almost done with the doll by the time I had realized what I had done. I did manage to get the face clean enough to do a face up. I soaked the head in rubbing alcohol instead of acetone, attempting to shrink it. I don't think it worked. I cut off the little gargoyle ears since I would not need them for this project. And I sanded the sheen off of the body, or buffed it off, or whatever have you. At first I tried to fill the little holes in the head with some air dry clay, but that utterly failed and left a mess. It dyed the skin. So then I decided that I would try and use resin to fill the holes. In retrospect, I should have used something flexible like hot glue. I was going to make her hair white, so I thought her roots should be a lot darker than her actual hair color, right? So I painted her scalp gray. Now 
Next, I got out my Dremel and sanded off her, I don't know, copyright mark, her underwear, and these little lines where they put the two halves of her together. I wanted her to be mostly smooth because of where her clothing was going to show her body. Because I took off her ears, I needed new ones, so I 3D sculpted and printed these ones in three different sizes. I think I decided to go with the largest one, and then I mirrored it and printed it again for the other side of the face. I used UV resin glue to stick the ears on the side of the face. I thought it would be the best glue I could use for the situation, though I kind of wish now I'd put them on after I put on the hair. Then I finally got to the painting. I somehow lost the beginnings where I first did the black coat, but I did continue the blush it for quite a while after that first coat. I believe this is after I put on Mr. Super Clear, then a layer of black, and then Mr. Super Clear again. I blushed the body at the same time as the head to make absolutely sure there wasn't going to be a mismatch in color. And then, happy days, the doll is finally ready for her face up. I started by trying to use the watercolor pencils like all the other artists do, but I found that they weren't laying down anywhere near enough pigment. I don't know if this is because perhaps they're low quality, or maybe I didn't were supposed to dip them in water and didn't know. It's also possible that I didn't have enough layers of Mr. Super Clear on, so there's nothing for them to grab onto, but I really just didn't find them all that helpful. I did use them to lay out the basic shape of the eye. The white just wasn't laying down at all though, it was not going to work for me.
I switch to acrylic paint since that is the thing that I am most comfortable with when it comes to art supplies. After the whites of the eyes, I started laying down the shadow and highlights of her purple eyes. It was pretty quick once I was using supplies I was familiar with. I chose black for the natural color of her lips. I thought that it made sense with her skin being nearly black. I continued building up color with my acrylics for a very long time. I wanted to really have all the colors deep and detailed. I went back to the watercolor pencils for the shading because I thought it would be easier to get a light shading with less pigmented products. And with a couple more touch-ups, her face-up was finished. And I gotta say, I think she's pretty beautiful for my very first one. Next, I started making her clothes. Somewhere in the middle, I actually started her hair, ripped it out, and restarted it. So sometimes she'll have hair and sometimes she won't. I had this cloth that I really didn't care about that I decided to make a pattern out of. I just held it up to her body and started cutting it. For the most part it worked. I had to do the pants twice, but for the blouse it worked quite well.
I did the blouse and pants out of this very thin satiny material. I think it worked rather well. Instead of doing a regular seam, I used tacky glue to seal the edges. Um, for some dolls it would not have worked since it discolored the material, but since this doll lives in the forest, it makes sense that she would have kind of dirty-ish clothes, so I was chill with it. The belt and pouch were thin suede that looked like leather. I made their pattern the same way that I made the other patterns where I just held it up to her and cut it. And then I cut it out of the suede material. I had this really amazing crimped fabric that I wanted to use for her cloak and so I used the same method, the draping method of making her cloak pattern with this weird other cloth I got somewhere. Next, I hand sewed all of the bits of her costume together and it was time for accessories. I had some buckles that I had previously made out of polymer clay. That's what it was made out of. I had some tiny magnets that I used for fastening all the clothes together. But most of the accessories were made specifically for this character. I 3D sculpted her and printed her some potion bottles, sculpted and printed her a cute little bow, and made her adorable little shoulder armor with a skull. All of these videos can be seen on my 3D sculpting channel which I will link below. And now it is time for the tale of two hair. It all starts when I ordered wefts through the mail. They had like a really thick part that was sewn together. And so when I glued them to her head, they didn't really lay flat. They were patchy. Her hair didn't really lay right. And as you can see, I didn't get any of it on film. It was all just out of reach. On top of this, I was using tacky glue and would have to dry it overnight in between each layer of hair. And then when I would pull the pins out that were holding it there, it would pull the hair off with it. It was a nightmare. About the time I was ready to chuck this doll straight out the window, the other hair and rerouting tool that I ordered came. I ordered this way before anything else for this project. It was the very first thing I ordered and it never came. But it finally got there and so I was so happy I dunked that doll's head in hot water and ripped that hair off. It was so nasty and gross. The doll's head was somewhat mangled after all of this so I repainted her scalp white and glued the ears back on. This was my first time rerouting, and I loved it. It was super fun, it was relaxing, I just watched TV and chilled out and rerouted this doll's whole head.
When she was done, I filled her head with tacky glue and let her sit for a couple of days. I really didn't know how long it would take to dry, but I wanted to make sure it was dry before I styled the hair. I made sure her hair would lay flat by putting her in very hot water and very quickly combing it down and then I teased it out of her face with a couple of clips and let it set overnight to dry. Next it was time to style her hair. I started out by giving her a trim since I wanted her hair quite a bit shorter. She was wearing a hood and so all of this excess hair would just get in the way even though I am fond of longer hair. Next, she's got some simple braids to keep her hair out of her face. This was kind of difficult because she kept spinning around and around. Then it was time to put her head back on and clothe her. Found it difficult to get her cloak on, but if I didn't make it this tight, it never would have sat properly. I decided to call her Nyseri after one of my D&D characters. Nyseri walked through the woods silently. Hunting always reminded her of hunting with her mother in the Northlands. As she drew back her bow, she thought of the crisp morning air, the smell of honeysuckles, and her mother's voice directing her. As she let her arrow fly, she remembered all of her mother's wise words. She would always remember. Nyseri gave a silent prayer to the spirit of the animal that just gave its life for hers. And then she packed her food home with her. Very grateful to her mother and the forest spirit. If you liked my video, please share, comment, subscribe, and let me know if there's anything you'd like to see.